President Trump softened his criticism of outgoing British Prime Minister Theresa May on day two of his state visit to the United Kingdom. He said the U.K. will remember her fondly if it successfully exits the European Union. May is stepping down as leader of the Conservative Party after repeatedly failing to secure a Brexit deal. Meanwhile, thousands of protesters rallied against the president's visit. They carried signs and flew a giant baby Trump blimp. We'll get the latest from London after the news summary. While in Britain, President Trump also said that he is likely to impose a 5 percent tariff next week on all Mexico's imports to the U.S. That is, unless Mexico does more to stop illegal immigration by June 10th. Senate Republicans have already warned that they will try to block the president's planned tariffs on Mexican goods. Officials from Mexico and the U.S. will hold trade talks at the White House tomorrow. The Federal Reserve signaled today that it is prepared to cut interest rates if trade tensions with Mexico and China threaten the U.S. economy. That triggered a massive rally on Wall Street, with stocks logging their second best day of the year. The Dow Jones Industrial Average soared 512 points to close at 25,332. The Nasdaq rose 194 points, and the S&P 500 added 59. Today marks 30 years since the Chinese military crushed student-led pro-democracy protests in Beijing's Tiananmen Square. Hundreds or possibly thousands of people are thought to have been killed. Today, protesters in semi-autonomous Hong Kong held candlelight vigils to remember the victims. But back in mainland China, the ruling Communist Party censored all mention of the anniversary. We'll have more on the ongoing impact from that deadly crackdown later in the program. Meanwhile, China has issued multiple travel warnings to the U.S., claiming that Chinese visitors have been interrogated and harassed by U.S. authorities. It comes amid a brewing trade dispute between the two countries. In Beijing, China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs urged travelers to be on alert. Recently, U.S. law enforcement authorities repeatedly harassed Chinese nationals in the United States via entry and exit checks and home interviews. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs reminds Chinese nationals and enterprises in the United States to raise safety awareness, take adequate precautions, and properly handle emergencies. China's Ministry of Culture and Tourism issued its own travel alert, citing high numbers of shootings and robberies in the U.S. The Trump administration is imposing new restrictions on U.S. citizens traveling to Cuba. They include a ban on most educational and recreational visits to the island, known as people-to-people -people travel. Cruise ships and private aircraft will also be prohibited. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin said that that's in response to Cuba's, quote, destabilizing role in the Western Hemisphere. The cardinal who is leading the U.S. Catholic Church's response to its sex abuse scandal has now been accused himself of mishandling a misconduct case in Texas. The Associated Press reports that Cardinal Daniel DiNardo, the Archbishop of Galveston, Houston, allowed his deputy to remain in the ministry after he coerced a married woman into a sexual relationship. The priest also pressured her family for hundreds of thousands of dollars in donations. DiNardo is set to preside over a meeting of U.S. bishops that is aimed at preventing clergy abuse next week. Kurt, Virginia Governor Ralph Northam has summoned state lawmakers for a special session to consider new gun control legislation. That announcement came on the heels of Friday's mass shooting in Virginia Beach that killed 12 people. Today in Richmond, Northam, who's a Democrat, appealed to the state's Republican-controlled General Assembly to put safety before party loyalty. It is wrong that we now view these mass shootings as the normal. In fact, it is wrong that we view gun violence in general as the new normal. I will be asking for votes and laws, not thoughts and prayers. Kirk Cox, who is the Republican Speaker of the Virginia State General Assembly, called the special session, quote, hasty and suspect in the wake of the governor's blackface photo scandal earlier this year. 
Florida prosecutors say that a sheriff's deputy who failed to confront the gunman during the 2018 Parkland school shooting has been arrested. Scott Peterson faces 11 criminal charges, including child neglect and perjury. They carry a maximum combined prison sentence of nearly 100 years. Former White House Communications Director Hope Hicks has agreed to turn over documents related to President Trump's 2016 campaign as part of a congressional investigation. That after the White House advised her not to share them. Hicks and former White House Deputy Counsel Annie Donaldson were both subpoenaed last month. Donaldson was also directed not to cooperate. There is word that President Trump's former campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, will soon be transferred to the notorious Rikers Island Jail in New York City. He had been serving a more than seven-year sentence for tax and bank fraud charges at a minimum security federal prison in Pennsylvania. But a New York judge ordered the transfer while Manafort faces pending state charges of mortgage fraud and conspiracy in New York. And in Sudan, thousands of pro-democracy demonstrators protested in the suburbs of Khartoum. They rallied a day after security forces destroyed their main protest site in the capital, killing at least 35 people. Today, the United Nations appealed to the Sudanese military to halt its crackdown. Yesterday, the situation escalated significantly, and we've seen many deaths and injuries and arrests and detentions. We are very concerned um, that if the military council um, digs in its heels uh, and refuses to, to speak to the opposition, that the situation will escalate further. Military leaders and pro-democracy activists have been negotiating who would run the country since longtime dictator Omar al-Bashir was ousted in April. Still to come on the news hour, how President Trump's visit to Britain has inflamed a country already consumed by infighting. The tactics Russian operatives used to connect with the Trump campaign during the 2016 election. Remembering the massacre in China's Tiananmen Square, 30 years to the day since the crackdown, and much more.